Hi there, this is Liu from the DIY Drone channel. Today we're going to be talking about Mission Planner with the Wakira QRX350 Pro. As you could see, that's my original QRX350 and that is the Pro version. And that is the USB port we'll be connecting Mission Planner to the flight controller. You can find everything you need to know about Mission Planner at planner.hardopilot.com What makes Mission Planner essential to the QRX350 Pro? Well, it increases the functionality to a whole new level of sophistication. Besides return to launch, you get circle around, waypoints, and many many more, including changing the commands and also tuning the quadcopter. Before you begin, you may want to take a look at the instructions before you run the installation utility. There's some pretty good tips and solutions if you should ever run into any issues, but we've never had any problems over the last two years. I'm just going to point out some of the key points. Uh, so let's take a look at the settings. Uh, the recommended settings for the APM is 11,500 for the board weights but for the Wakiva QRX350 Pro you need to change that to 57,600 instead. The next thing you want to pay attention to is the COM port that is assigned to your computer when you connect the QRX350. It will be different for each computer. Now we are ready to begin our download. Click on the download button, save the file to your local folder. Run the application or double click on it and begin your installation. Even though you do not really need a LiPo battery to configure a mission planner, but it is a good practice to remove your propellers first because once you start working on it and you forget about it, things could happen. So first thing first, remove the propellers. Now it's a good time to turn on your radio transmitter. Next we uh, will need the USB cable that's provided by Wakira. Plug in the USB port. And also to the side of the quadcopter, push it really hard until you establish a connection to your mission planner. Take note of the COM port. Uh, in this case, we have COM port 5. Startup Mission Planner. You should see the files loading up. And what you need to do the first thing is to change the baud rate at the top right corner. Set it to 57600 and then select the COM port that has been assigned to your flight controller. Ready? Click connect. 5, 4, 3, 2, are you ready? This is an overview of the mission planner with all the color codings and all the explanation. Do remember that uh, in order to see this in real time, we will need telemetry installed during flight. Let's take a look at the flight modes first. You will notice that you could change flight modes 1, 4 and 6 by flipping the switches. And that's the standard that comes with the QRX350. But with the Mission Planner, you could now mix your, your switches and add three more flight modes, plus one more flight modes, probably you could add to a gear switch. And that can be your auto waypoint switch, which begins your waypoint flight. Or you could assign it to a return to launch designated switch, for example, a panic switch which will override all flight modes. See that donate button? I'm sure Michael, creator of Mission Planner, would appreciate this. 
The next feature is really popular that is setting waypoints. Autopilot uh, uses Google Maps as one of the options and you set different waypoints at different locations to perform specific commands and and you could take off and you could go to a specific waypoint, land, take off and return home. And that can be all done with Mission Planner. Keep in mind that you will need a telemetry uh, to actually view this in real time. If not, all you could do is set the waypoints, load it up, and then let it fly its mission. In order to fly waypoints, you will need one flight mode assigned to autopilot. You can use one of the six flight modes you might have, or you could assign it to channel 7 or 8. The last thing is we want to take a look at the full parental list. The full parental list gives you an overview of all the configuration you have. So the first thing you need to do is back up the original copy from Wakira so you don't make any uh, mistakes. Save it to your local folder. And I'm just going to point out some of the key areas that you might consider changing. And the first one would be the failsafe battery voltage. It's, it's not so important, but you could change it to 10.5 if you prefer to have a longer flight time. The next one is important, the SBAT enable. It basically changes how your failsafe takes the necessary action when the battery is low. So right the default is to set it to land and you don't want to land in the middle of nowhere so the best setting would be to return to launch uh, so when the battery is low it flies back the next one is the return to launch altitude I like to set it to 2200 centimeters that's about 72 feet uh, basically it ascends the quadcopter to a specific height before returning to launch and this is to avoid uh, tall trees, cell towers, or uh, lampposts uh, on the way back. Uh, the last one is the waypoint your behavior. You might want to set it to 3 if you fly FPV. Uh, basically, it rotates your quadcopter facing the direction that it's flying when returning back. Um, if not, it's kind of confusing when you're flying FPV when it's heading back this way and you're facing a different direction. So here I have for you the summary of the suggestions we just made. And that sums it up for this episode. There's a lot more to cover on uh, Ardu Pilot and Mission Planner. So if you're interested, uh, stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, check out the next episode. Talk to you then. Bye. This is the iLook Plus at 1080p.